In this tutorial, we will be discussing oxidation reduction reactions. We've discussed several different other kinds of reactions, but these reactions involve the transfer of electrons from one atom to another. They're called oxidation reduction reactions, or to shorten it, which is more often, redox. Many involve the reaction of a substance that contains oxygen, whether it's pure oxygen or oxygen with something else. In order to convert a free element into an ion, which we've done several times when we've done ionic compounds, by looking at the periodic table, plus one, plus two, plus three, minus three, minus two, and so on, those numbers had to come from somewhere, and that somewhere is the exchange of electrons. So those electrons have to go somewhere and they have to come from somewhere. So of course, if one atom loses an electron, another must accept it. Reactions where electrons are transferred from one atom to another are the redox reactions. If an atom loses electrons, this is called oxidized. If an atom gains electrons, this is called reduced. We have a mnemonic device here to help us remember gain electrons reduced. Lose electrons oxidized. It's a mnemonic device and we usually just say Leo Ger. Lose electrons oxidized for Leo. Gain electrons reduced for Ger. Let's take it one step further and let's look at the number line and think about what an electron really is and what's happening when you gain and lose. So an electron has a negative one charge. If you're gaining a negative one charge, you're going to become more negative. So if we look at the number line, we did this when we were back in elementary school. We first started learning about numbers. If you start off at zero, and you become more negative, you're gaining electrons. You're becoming more negative. So gain electrons, reduce GER. If you start off at zero or some other number and you become more positive, you're losing elect electrons. So you're oxidized. Leo, lose electrons oxidized. Now let's look at that mathematically. We're losing a negative one, which then becomes more positive. Here, we have sodium going from normal sodium to a plus one on the other side. So it's starting up at zero and it's going to a plus one. It's becoming more positive, so it's losing electrons, so it's oxidized. Chlorine, starting at zero, going to a negative one. It's gaining electrons, it's becoming more negative, so it's reduced, gain electrons reduction. For reactions that are not metal and non-metal, or do not involve oxygen, we need, to, we need a method for determining how the electrons are transferred. Chemists assign a number to each element in a reaction called the oxidation state. That allows them to determine the electron flow in the reaction. Even though these may look like ion charges, oxidation states are not ion cha charges. Oxidation start states are imaginary. They're a number that the chemists have put to it, not that they actually hold true, whereas ion charges are real. They are measurable. So let's take a look, and these are in order of priority. If it's a free element, the oxidation state is zero. So previously, we looked at this, sodium was an element, chlorine was an element, there weren't any charges and it wasn't bonded to anything else. Therefore, 
their oxidation states were zero. Monatomic ions have an oxidation state equal to their charge. So Na is a plus one, Cl is a minus one. The sum of the oxidation states of an atom, of all the atoms in a compound, has to equal zero. The sum of the oxidation state of all the atoms in a polyatomic ion equals the charge of that ion. So NO3 minus, that minus has all those atoms have to equal that minus one charge. Group one, one metals have an oxidation state of plus one. Group two metals have an oxidation state, state, state of plus two. And then finally, with nonmetals, they have oxidation states according to this table. And it's priority down. So fluorine is going to be a minus one, hydrogen is going to be a plus one, carbon is going to be a minus two, and things like carbon you'd have to actually calculate. So let's practice that calculation. We have propanate. Determine the oxidation state of all the atoms in propanate ion. So we have three carbons, we have five hydrogens, and we have two oxygens. I put OX for oxygen just so I don't confuse it with the letter zero, for the number zero. Minus one. So I know from our rules, we don't have any metals there. Okay, we don't have any uh, free element. We don't have any metals. So we don't have to worry about the plus one or the plus two. We don't have any actual ions. The sum of them have to equal the charge, which is why I put negative one here. So we go down to the step number five for the nonmetals. We see that hydrogen is a plus one and oxygen is a minus two. So we have three carbons plus five plus ones plus two negative twos is equal to negative one. So three carbons plus five minus four is equal to negative one. Three carbons plus one is equal to negative one. Three carbons is equal to a negative two. Divide both sides by the three. Carbon is equal to a negative two thirds. Unlike ion charges, oxidation states can actually have a fraction. All right, so let's do some more practice. Br2, that follows our first rule. That's going to be a zero because it's an element. So both bromines are zero. This is a monatomic ion. I believe that's the second rule. So that's going to be a plus one. Lithium fluoride. The ionic compound, so lithium is going to be a plus one, fluorine is going to be a minus one. All right, now we have two nonmetals. This is where it gets tricky. We have one carbon and two oxygens. And that doesn't have a charge, so it's going to be a zero because it's a molecule. We know from our previous example that, car that oxygen is a minus two. So C plus two times negative two is equal to zero. So C minus four is zero, so carbon here is equal to a positive four. This is a polyatomic ion, so those five atoms those have to equal negative two. So one sulfur and four oxygens have to equal a negative two. We're gonna put a negative two in for the oxygen because that was our rule for number five. So sulfur plus four times neg negative two is equal to negative two. So sulfur minus eight is equal to negative two. That means sulfur must be a positive six. And then finally we have Na2O. Our knee jerk reaction is to say that's a minus two and that's a plus two. However, that plus two doesn't match up 
because sodium has to be a plus one according to this rule up here. Monatomic ions have an oxidation state equal to their charge. And then right here, group one metals have an oxidation state of a plus one. So that means with this one, Na has to be a plus one. So two times a positive one plus whatever oxygen, two of whatever oxygen is, has to equal zero. So two plus two oxygens goes zero. So that means oxygen has to equal one, a negative one, pardon. All right, so oxidation occurs when the atom's oxidation state increases during the reaction. Reduction occurs when the atom's oxidation state decreases in a reaction. Remember, Leo Gurr. lose electrons oxidized, gain electrons reduced. Okay, so the charges have already been spelled out for you. So carbon is going from a minus four to a plus four. So let's look at the number chain. This is zero, so one, two, three, four. This is a negative four. One, two, three, four. This is a positive four. It's going from here to here. It's becoming more positive. So it's losing electrons in the process. Because it's losing electrons, it's being oxidized. Here, the positive one and positive one is remaining the same. Oxygen, however, is becoming a negative two in both scenarios. So here and here. So once again, let's look at the number chain. Zero, number line. One, two, negative one, negative two is starting at zero. It's going to the left, which means it's becoming more negative which means it's gaining electrons. If it's gaining electrons, that means it's reduced. GER, gain electrons reduction. So, carbon is oxidized and oxygen is reduced. Oxidation reduction must occur simultaneously. If an atom loses electrons, another atom must take them. The reactant must, that reduces the an element and then and another reactant is called the reducing agent. So let's repeat that. If it reduces an element, it's called a reducing agent. The reducing agent is being oxidized. If a reactant that oxidizes an element and another reactant is called an oxidizing agent, the oxidizing agent is reduced. So let's take a look at this. Sodium is a zero. Chlorine is a zero. Let's pair them up. So number line starts at zero and it's going to a positive one. It's becoming more positive, which means it's losing electrons, which means it's being oxidized. Because it's oxidized, that means sodium is the reducing agent. Chlorine, starting at zero and going to a negative one, is gaining electrons, it's becoming more negative, so it's being reduced. Leo Gurr, gain electrons reduction, so it's the oxidizing agent. So let's assign oxidation states and determine the elements oxidized and reduced, and determine the oxidizing agent and reducing agent in the following equation. 
So, let's go through and figure out all the oxidation states first. Iron is a zero because it's a elemental. Now, we have to figure out what all these are. Mn is a transition metal, so we don't know what the charge is, plus four oxygens is going to equal a negative one. So Mn plus four, we learned before that oxygen is typically a negative two, is a minus one. So Mn minus eight is equal to a negative one, so Mn here is a plus seven, oxygen is a minus two, hydrogen is a plus one, iron to plus three. Oxygen once again is a minus two. So Mn plus two oxygen, two negative twos, is equal to zero because I don't have a charge up here anymore. So Mn is equal to four, so that's a positive four. And here, oxygen is a minus two and hydrogen is a plus one. All right, so let's match up the things that changed. Iron changed, and manganese changed. So iron started at zero and went to a positive three. Became more positive, which means it lost electrons. Lose electrons oxidize, so that means this is oxidized. If it was oxidized, that means this is the reducing agent. Well, if that's oxidized, that means manganese must be reduced. But let's double check that on the numbered line. So, manganese, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, starts at a plus seven, one, two, one, two, three, four, and it goes to a plus four. It's becoming more negative, meaning it's gaining electrons, gain electrons reduced, so if it's reduced, that means it's the oxidizing agent. Let's try this again. Assign oxidation numbers, oxidation states, determine the elements oxidize and reduce, and determine the oxidizing agent and reducing agent of the following. Well, in the first one, it's actually fairly easy because they tell you plus four, this is element, so it's a zero plus two and a plus two. So 10 is going from a plus four to a plus two. Let's look at the number line. One, two, three, four. It's starting off with a plus four. One, two. It's going to a two. So it's becoming more negative. Because of that, you know, it's gaining electrons. Gain electrons reduced, which means it's the oxidizing agent. Calcium is going from a zero to a plus two. Zero, one, two. It's becoming more positive, meaning it's losing electrons, which means it's being oxidized. Lose electrons oxidized, which means it's also the reducing agent. Okay, so down here, fluorine is elemental, so it's zero. Sulfur is zero. Here, fluorine is a minus one because of our chart. So if we have S plus four times negative one is equal to zero, that means S must be of positive four. So fluorine is going from a zero to a minus one. It's becoming more negative, meaning it's gaining electrons gain electrons reduced, which means this is the oxidizing agent. Sulfur is going from a zero to a plus four. Zero, one, two, three, four. It's becoming more positive, which means it's losing electrons. Lose electrons oxidized, which means this is the reducing agent. 